it says, uh, through the offspring, the Lord gives you by the young woman, make your family be like that of Perez and Tamar who bore Judah. Okay? Now, the woman that Judah slept with is Tamar. Right. The son that was born to Ju Judah and Tamar was Perez. So here's this woman, and she's saying, may your... Now, this is who she's saying to. She's speaking to Ruth and Boaz. Okay? So you understand this. Ruth is a Gentile woman who made friends with a Jewish woman through her son. When the son died, she went back to Israel, forsaked her gods, went back to Israel with Naomi, and, and, and resided in Israel and took on Naomi's God. So she meets a guy named Boaz who owns a field. Boaz just happens to be a kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer is a very wealthy person who can buy you out of slavery and purchase back your land if you sold it and you're my relative. Because we want to keep the land in the family. So she meets this guy Boaz and her name is Ruth. She is a Gentile. So she arrives in the town at the time of Passover, the barley harvest. But by the end of Passover, Passover starts here, 50 days later is Pentecost. By the end of Pentecost, she is marrying the kinsman redeemer. Yeah. But she's a Gentile. Yeah. But she's married a Jewish kinsman redeemer. Yeah. Yeah. So here she is, here we are here, they're married, and somebody's trying to bless the family. And they say, may your family be blessed, just like Tamar, Judah, and their son, Perez. And you're like, wait a minute, that caused a 10-year curse. What are you talking about? That's not what she was saying. She was saying, because out of this lineage now is going to come the descendant that will birth Jesus Christ into the world. She's understanding this. So let's read um, in, in the book of Ruth. Let's keep reading. Because I want you to understand this completely. Okay, it says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. Verse 13. Then he went to her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive. And she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, um, the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than, than seven sons has given him birth. Okay, it says, Then Naomi took the child, uh, uh, laid him uh, in her lap and cared for him. The woman uh, living there said, Naomi has a son. Naomi has a son. And then and they named him Obed. Okay? So they named the son Obed. He was the father of Jesse. The father of David. So through the birth of Obed, came Jesse, who gave birth to David. So now let's read the lineage. It says, this, is, this then is the family line. Perez uh, was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram is the father of, of, of Aminadad. Aminadad is the father of Nashon. Nashon is the father of Salmon. Salmon is the father of Boaz. And Boaz is the father of, uh, of Obed, and Obed is the father of Jesse, and Jesse is the father of David. That's ten lineages. So by the time they get to David, the curse is over. Yeah. Yeah. David can now be used by God in the service of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The curse is over. Yeah. Now out of David comes who? Jesus Christ. So we're following the lineage here. Let's go backwards. 
uh, to the book of Samuel, chapter 4. Uh, uh, Samuel, 2 Samuel, chapter 2. I'm sorry. 2 Samuel, chapter 2. So this is all, all of that was to get you to set up to understanding that in the future, a kinsman redeemer who is Jewish, understand, the kinsman redeemer who is Jewish is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ is a kinsman redeemer because he can buy you out of slavery and he can also repurchase the land. Yeah. And how did Jesus Christ buy you out of slavery? Through his blood. How did he repurchase the land for Israel? Through his blood. So Jesus Christ is the kinsman redeemer. So it's telling you that in the future, a kinsman redeemer is going to marry a Gentile bride. When the woman said, um, if I could but touch the hem of his talit, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, then I will be made whole. She understood whole meaning sozo, meaning I will be healed physically, I will be healed emotionally, I will be saved. She knew that she was going to get the whole thing. Why? She was touching the garment for one purpose, and that purpose was by touching the garment of a kinsman redeemer. You know what you're doing? You say, cover me, marry me, be my covering. Yeah. And so Jesus was a kinsman redeemer. Yes, yes. That's why he said, power has gone from out, out of me. Why? It's not how they touch because people bump at me all day. But the person that touched me asked for marriage. Yes. The person that touched me asked for wholeness. Yes. So he turned around and saw the woman. Yes. So you have to understand Jesus is a kinsman redeemer. Yes. When he became king over Israel and reigned two years. The house of Judah, however, followed David. The men of the time David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Now, let's back up so you can understand that. Ishboel, Ish in Hebrew means man. Isha is woman. Ishboel, Ishboel means the, the man of shame. So he has a negative connotation to his own name. Yeah. Ishboel is not supposed to be king over Israel. Who's supposed to be king over Israel? David. David. David is supposed to be king over Israel. But Saul went ahead and put his own son, Ishboel, and made him king over David. So... David is now going to go to the land of Hebron and he says, well, I'll go to Hebron. And all the, the people of the tribe of Judah, which are now mixed, right? Because they got Canaanites who have now taken on the, 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 taken on the blood and the God of Israel. Yes. So this whole land in Hebron is filled with Gentiles who've taken on the, the God of Israel and Jews. Yes. So that the tribe of Judah and Gentiles are living in Hebron. Yes. David goes to, 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 the, to Hebron and they crown him as king. Yes. Yes. He can't be king over Israel because that's not being ruled by an evil man. Right. So he has to go to Hebron and reign there for seven years and six months. Do you understand? Yes. Praise God. So he's there in Hebron, and they've already crowned him as king. And he's the king, but he's not king over all of Israel. Because he's going to have to do something to get uh, kingship over all of them. Go to chapter 3 in the second, same book. At the top, it says, The war between the house of Saul and the house of David lasted a long time. David grew stronger and stronger while the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. So there's a war going on. Yeah. What is the war about? Because David knows he's supposed to be king over all of Israel. Right. So they're at war. 